Good morning. I'm so glad you joined us. Uh, this is our introduction section to our training for our outreach. And so I'm going to take a few minutes to kind of tell you what our, pur our purpose is and, and everything. And so uh, I hope that you'll pay close attention. But uh, first of all, the purpose is that uh, we need to get out uh, from uh, our churches. Uh, we need to get out from our homes and go into highways and byways and share the gospel with people. It's, it's so important. I cannot tell you how important it is to share your faith with others. You know, God sent Jesus to die for us. And he died for us. And he did his part. And then he told us to go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. And then baptize them. And then teach them all things that he taught us. And lo, he was with us always to the end of the age. So the importance of sharing our faith is more important today than any other day. The, the reason for that, especially today, is with all this uh, virus going on, and there's a real fear in our uh, nation, and uh, people are receptive. Uh, I read someplace a long time ago that God will create receptivity, but it's our responsibility to go out and share the faith with those who are receptive. You know, Jesus said, don't say to me uh, that the harvest is three, three months away. I say to you, that the harvest is white, even now, basically paraphrased. But he says the problem is that the laborers are few. So over the next few weeks, we're going to step aside, and hopefully we're going to share with you how to share your faith in such a way that people come to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Now, I just I really believe that, that God's people want to see people saved. I believe that. And I believe that we go out and we tell people about Jesus. But ladies and gentlemen, it's not enough just to tell them. we got to know how to draw the net. We need to know how to bring them to the point where they're willing to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And so that's what I'm going to be teaching you over the next five or six weeks. How to bring an individual in a conversation to a point where you can ask them if they'd be willing to, to pray to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. You see, if we just share the story of Jesus, if we just tell them all the exciting things that happen in church, you know, they, they may come, and hopefully uh, they'll hear the gospel in a clear presentation. But, you know, they may not in churches. So it's important for individuals to sit down, to stand up, to have conversations with people in their circle of influence. And God has made people receptive today like he hasn't in years. And so we, we need to take advantage of that. Now, let me just share some things with you, and I've, I've written them down so I wouldn't forget uh, let me share with you some, what some of the scriptures say about uh, our responsibility. Now, I only, I only put down seven because seven is a perfect number. But I could go on and on and on. But let me just share a few with you. In Psalm 126.6, it says, He who goes out weeping, bearing the seed for soul, sowing, shall come home with sounds of joy, bringing his sheaves with him. In other words, what's that saying is those of us who go out, we go out. We, we don't say come to us, we go out. And we share the seed of the gospel. And people receive Christ. And we're going to bring our sheaves with us. Where are we going to bring them? When we go to heaven. You know, a sad thing is so many Christians are going to go to heaven and never have won anybody to Christ. Oh, they've had a lot of conversations. They've done a lot of ministry. They've done a lot of good things. But they've not done that which is most important. Let me continue. Proverbs 11.30 says, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And whoever captures souls is wise. <laughs> You know what you're doing? Whoever kept your soul is obedient. That's where I like to put that. Let's look at Matthew 4, 19. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Ladies and gentlemen, I, 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 sh I share with you, with all my heart, with all of my heart, if you're not fishing for men, you're not following Jesus. That's the reason he came. He didn't come just so we can do good ministries. We need to do good ministry. We need to do all these things that we're doing. But we are doing for a reason to help people be receptive to the gospel that we can see them come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We can, do a lot, we can feed all kinds of people, which we ought to do that, and we are doing that. But if we don't share the gospel with them, when Jesus comes, they're going to be more hungry than ever, and they're, going to, they're not going to get to go to heaven. So let me continue. Mark 16, 15 says, And he said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Luke 14, 23, And the master said to the servant, Go out to the highways and hedges, and compel people to come in that my house may be filled. Go out. Do you ever some think you, you spell God capital G-O-D? The first two letters are G-O. 
Go. Do you ever think about that? You know, 1 Corinthians 15, 3. For I delivered you as to first importance. There's nothing more important than sharing the gospel with people so they can be saved. There's, no, there's nothing more important than that. And we get sidetracked doing good things that we ought to do. But it's not the best thing. So, for I delivered to you as to first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scripture. That's the Gospel. We need to share with people. And we need to share that, but then say, now, let me share with you how you can receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior and be forgiven of all your sins. Number seven, this is the last one. Matthew 9, 37. Then he said to the disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Years ago, I heard that 98% of those who profess to be Christians never share their faith to the point where they lead somebody to Christ. doesn't mean they don't share their faith, but they just don't take the final step to bring somebody uh, to the Lord. All right, now, let's, let's look at, uh, you know, so those are the soul winning scriptures, and I can give you more. Uh, you can look them up for yourself. But let's see, let's see what the other Christians have said over, over the years about soul winning. Uh, C.H. Spurgeon said, you were not saved that you might go to heaven alone. You were saved that you might take others with you. That's the task Jesus has given us. The only alternative to soul winning is disobedience to Christ. That's Curtis Hudson. The only alternative to soul winning is disobedience to Christ. If we're, if, not, if we're not winning people to Jesus, we'll be in disobedience. The gospel is not something we come to church to hear. It's something we go from church to tell. Vance Havner. It is a sad fact that the vast majority of people who sit in pews on Sunday never tell anybody about Jesus on Monday. David Jeremiah. If you had the cure for cancer, wouldn't you share it? You have the cure for death. Get out there and share it. Kurt Cameron. There is no joy in the world like the joy of bringing that one soul to Christ. William Barclay. A man who has found out what his true work is, winning souls, and does it, such is the happiest man, the Moody. Okay, I shared with you the scripture. I shared with you what people in the past have said, great leaders in our church. But now I want to take a few minutes and share three to have three testimonies from three people who have taken the training and how it's changed their lives. So I hope you listen very attentive because these are regular everyday people, just like you. Uh, some of them were frightened. Some of them were not so frightened. Some of them kept on going when things didn't look like anything was happening, but they didn't give up. So I want you to hear their testimonies and what's happened in their lives since they've taken the training. And what's happened in their lives can happen in your lives and people will be saved. Good morning. Uh, this is uh, George Smith, a member of our church, who went through our GROW training, which is a evangelism training to teach uh, laymen and, and pastors and individuals how to share their faith in such a way that they can lead somebody to Christ. You know, many times we share the gospel, but we just share the gospel and we cut uh, and stop because we don't know how to draw the net. We don't know how to, to actually lead the person to receive Christ. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today. And George, you went through the growth training? Well, actually, I've been through it several times. Several because, times. Uh, every time you have one, uh, we're invited to reattend if we like. Now, and I've done that because yeah. it just, it, it's always helps to reinforce because it's such excellent training. Yeah. Now, why do you think I have to take it over and over and over again? Well, it's a re repetition is good for all of us, and, and we're going to pick up something different and new every time we go through Exactly. Training. Yeah, if you don't stay sharp, uh, you get dull. That's right. And so you need to keep uh, training like you say. Mm -hmm. uh, every time you take it, you'll pick up something different, and you'll get, and you'll, it'll remind you. Uh, to be about what God's called you to do. Right. Well, I have a couple of questions here for you, George. Mm -hmm. What was one thing you learned from the Grove Evangelism training? I know you learned a lot, but just, yeah. just one well, thing. Well, there's many things. It's hard to just focus on one, but uh, the training is excellent. It's, uh, it's, 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 well, it's, it's just excellent. It's right down what you need. And uh, you, can, you can go at it in stages, so it's easy to, you know, to assimilate. And uh, it just gives you some confidence knowing that, that uh, you, you, you feel you know how to make a good presentation. Oh, well, outstanding. Thank you. Well, how did the GROW uh, training change your Christian life? Well, anytime uh, we're called to be obedient. 
And anytime you're obedient, you get a blessing. And what we're doing here with the gospel is the most obedient thing you can do. Amen. Uh, amen. Well, finally, uh, and I'll let you off the hook because this is a this is a precious time. But uh, I know you were involved with uh, the visitation program where uh, mm -hmm. the church was going out after the training and uh, sharing the gospel with individuals. Uh, do you mind uh, sharing with us uh, maybe one or two of uh, the visitation visits that you had? Well, it, it's a little easier for me to just share what what happens during a lot of the visits, and. Um, of course, sometimes, you know, you, you strike out, but we've never had the door. I've never had the door slammed in my face. Everybody is generally polite, so, uh, but the ones that you're able to, let's say, get your foot in the door somewhat, it's just amazing to watch the transformation when the Holy Spirit's at work. It just transitioned from, gee, I hope these people will leave pretty soon. To next thing you know, they're sitting on the edge of their seat and making a profession of faith. Praise the Lord. Yeah, I, I, I found that up too, you know, uh, in, in the years that I've been going out and sharing the gospel. That, as you say, uh, uh, sometimes people, did, you know, they, they, they just don't know what to expect. But as you start sharing, the whole atmosphere changes. And where before it was uh, like, uh, well, you know, share with me what you want to share. Mm -hmm. And then that's what you can't get away from. That's right. Yeah, I've had yeah, people they, actually get in the car with me. So. Yeah, they last longer than you think a lot of times. Yeah, yeah. But one other thing to mention, too, is sometimes you'll go on a visit, visit and you'll uh, either have the wrong <clears throat> wrong address because of the information given to you wasn't quite correct, or you'll just end up in the wrong place thinking you're at the right place. And we've had several visits where going to the wrong place was the right place. That's where God wanted us. Yeah, I, I remember that uh, you sharing that uh, y'all went to visit this one uh, young man who that uh, night did receive Christ, but you had the wrong address and you went next door and uh, y'all led the, the uh, gentleman in that house to Lord before you made the visit to the young man. Right. Well, that that was what we call a divine appointment. Right. Well, well, thank you, George, and I appreciate it. And I know that uh, this is uh, kind of outside your comfort zone, but I'm willing. Uh, I appreciate you being willing to get outside your comfort zone. All right. Thank you. Thank you. This is Bertie and Barbara Black. Uh, they so graciously have agreed to come and kind of share uh, some of their encounters. And so I'm going to ask you all a few questions like I asked uh, George. And so the first question I want to find, ask you is, did you find that Grow Adventures and Training was difficult to learn? Was it difficult to learn? Not no. We've both been in uh, other trainings in the past. But uh, they seem very complicated and compared to what you taught us. It was very simple, but it wasn't just a particular method. You gave us options to develop it on our own, and I, I really appreciated that. Well, thank you. Uh, I know you both became involved in the visitation ministry at the church. Uh, did you find most people were unreceptive to your visits? Unreceptive? No. no. They were very receptive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, y'all made one visit that has really stuck out in my mind because my wife and I were going to make that visit, and there was a really a fine appointment, and mm -hmm. uh, I remember mm -hmm. we had planned on making the, the visit the, during the week as mm -hmm. part of our ministerial, uh, you know, uh, everyday activities, mm -hmm. and, uh, and mm -hmm. I just rejoiced, but I, I, that one there is really on my heart. Share that with me. You know the okay. one there? Okay, yeah. Uh, in fact, I was out with George and someone else, I don't remember who at the moment, but uh, we arrived to the door and it was the woman was standing on the porch looking up the street. And later as I thought about it, I realized that, you know, she was waiting for us because it was same time, same day of the week and everything. It was pouring rain. She didn't budge from the porch and she didn't invite us in. So we're standing in the rain and she had just lost two members of her family, uh, one in an accident and one I don't recall, I think may have been suicide or something. And uh, she was just distraught. And so she was totally open to hearing the gospel. She prayed to receive Christ. And it just, it was amazing. The uh, God sent us there. And I think that what was neat about that was, you know, the scripture is clear that we each have different parts to play. Sometimes we'll be the sower, sometimes we'll be the reaper. 
And in this case, since you guys had gone first, you, had, you were doing the sowing, and then the Lord sent us along, and we got the privilege of being the reaper. But we're all in it together, as you always remind us. Yes, I, I remember that, because my wife was on the team uh, a couple of weeks before that, and it was a burden to her, so I, was, I had planned to go uh, with my wife to, to talk to the lady. And so, uh, but God uh, got the victory, and so, and we rejoiced about that. Well, you know, uh, that uh, during the regular visitation of our uh, visitation program here, where we, where we go out and share what we learned, but uh, the, the third stage uh, is when you really become a soul winner. Mm -hmm. And that's when you do it as you go. In other words, that's your part of your everyday life. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that you have gone to that stage. Uh, do you mind uh, sharing maybe a couple of encounters of just as you've been out? That's not a planned thing. It's not mm -hmm. something because it's orchestrated that you're doing with a team. But you're just out and it's, it's your lifestyle. Okay. Yes. All right. You want me to? Yeah, you start. Okay. Well, there was one, I, I felt impressed to go to a particular store and buy some makeup. And I kept putting it off, putting it off. And finally, one day, I said, let's go to the store. I've got to buy this makeup. So I was delayed, again, going to the store about an hour. When I reached there, uh, one clerk had just arrived at the sales counter, and he said that the whole parking lot was full of police. And then there was an announcement. The sheriff was shutting down. The mall, nobody could leave. There was an incident in the parking lot. So all of a sudden, here these two clerks are talking about danger and death. And it was like, oh, divine appointment. So I began to share the gospel with them, and both of them received Christ that day. And, you know, so this is what I call a divine appointment. And also God had been um, prompting us for some time, a month or so, to go to this store and buy the makeup. But there was a specific time and specific words, and a, a specific time when two people would be together, and it was God's perfect timing. Yeah, yeah God's always in control, isn't he, Gloria? Mm -hmm. Well, Bunny, how about you share? Yeah, was, yeah, I'm going to share a story. Um, my wife and I went down to South Florida uh, for a funeral of a friend of ours, and we stayed with a, a friend of ours. His name, I'm going to mention his name because it's important. His name is Chris Zadie. Um, unusual name, but uh, he... He and his family invited us to stay with him uh, for that weekend. And it was him and his wife, his daughter, and his, his mother-in-law. So they were very hospitable to us, and so we decided to take them out to lunch. So we went to a local restaurant in the area, and we sat down, and we were sharing about how we had been learning how to share the gospel from Pastor Herb, and uh, we actually shared with him the, the story of the three circles. Amen. We did. And um, so our waiter comes to the store, I mean, comes to uh, our table, and Barbara notices a ring on his finger that was a very, very nice-looking ring. And she asks him, what's the significance of that ring? He goes, well, that's my high school ring. I went to a such and such high school. And so our friend Chris Zadie said, do you, did you have a teacher named Chris Zadie? We looked at each other. You know how it is when you look at your spouse, you know exactly what each other are thinking. You're Chris Zadie, and you are, are not a teacher and never have been. So why are you saying this? But he solved his own mystery. He says, that was my cousin. I says, oh, okay. So here, he, the, the, uh, waiter, the server said he was one of my favorite teachers, so we have endeared him to our table. Uh -huh. And all we had to do was look in his direction, and he was there, <laughs> you know, willing to and ready to serve us for any reason. And so, at the end of the meal, we paid our meal, paid our bill, and I got the waiter's attention. I says, "Did you ever hear the story of the three circles?" He said, "No." I said, would you like to? He said, yes. So I shared with him the story of the three circles. And when I got to the point where I said, which circle are you? He pointed to the broken circle. Mm -hmm. If you're familiar, the broken circle. And I said, where would you like to be? And he pointed to the God circle. I says, is there anything stopping you from praying to receive Christ right now? He said, no. So right there in that restaurant, 
we prayed. I said, you repeat after me. I will say the prayer. You repeat, repeat. When we got to the point, he says, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. He goes, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. Everyone in the restaurant could hear it. He goes, I want you to be Lord of my life. I want you to be Lord of my life. And he was, and it was like, wow, this guy is serious here. So at the end of the meal, we, uh, I got a Bible, and I got some literature for him to read. I took it to him, and then Chris said, I will follow up with him. Amen. And uh, so anyway, it, is, it was a divine appointment. We asked, Pastor Herb says, every day put on the armor of God, ask to be filled by the Spirit, and then we add, give us a divine appointment. Amen. And that's what that was. Yeah, there, there, you know, the Lord says, don't say that the harvest is three months off. Right. I say to you that the harvest is white, mm -hmm. but the labor is a few. And what I really appreciate about y'all's two testimonies today is there's no bad way not to share mm -hmm. the gospel, mm -hmm. except not to share it. Yeah. Right. And as you know, in the, in the growth training, we don't, as you mentioned, Barbara, we don't just teach you one method. Mm -hmm. We teach you several methods mm -hmm. because people hear different ways. So, hey, this has been exciting. And I tell you what, I get excited every time I'm around soul with <laughs> And I appreciate you all going to the next level. And I know that this is just two stories because I know every time you have the privilege of leading somebody to Jesus, you call me and you get so excited. And those are always my, the best days, you know. So, That's exciting. thank you. That's exciting. Ready? Barbara, you're the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is Danny Miller, and Danny, I appreciate you coming this morning and, and sharing uh, what God is doing in your life, and I know that you uh, took uh, the GROW training, the evangelism training, and so the question I have for you today, today is, what was the reason you took the GROW training in the first place? Well, before you first offered it, <clears throat> a friend of mine had been diagnosed with cancer, and uh, I felt totally inadequate. I, didn't, I knew he needed the Lord, but I didn't really know how to share it with him and felt inadequate, so I got Pastor Mark Abear to go with me to his house. And, and he prayed to receive Christ uh, just shortly before he died from cancer. So the first time you offered the class, it just I knew I had to take it because I didn't, I didn't want that feeling of inadequacy. I wanted to be able to share the gospel. And, uh, and since I have, I mean, it's, it's the most rewarding thing you can do. I can't yeah. think of anything more rewarding than seeing somebody come to the Lord. I know. It's, it's, it's exciting. And, you know, you may not always have a pastor with you when uh, you need to, to share with a friend. <laughs> Who's him? That's, that's that's a great truth. Well, let me ask you another question, Danny. When you started visiting on the visitation scene, did you see immediate results? I mean, as soon as you, you took the train, then you started going out. Did you see immediate results? Well, we um, we took a lot of visits, and I was going out with some some great people. Who I mean, you know, Miss Jenny Barrett and and Dr. Adolph and and others like that. Who you know, they've probably forgotten more than I've learned <laughs> so far, but. But uh, yeah, we kept going out and, and just weren't really seeing any results either. But we had some good visits, um, but but nobody accepted the Lord. And then we go to this one place up in Avon Park, um, a long ride that uh, the guy comes to the door not wearing a te not wearing a shirt and, and standing there. He's talking to, to Jenny and to Norma, and, and you know I'm thinking to myself, you know, this guy's never going to accept the Lord. Jenny asked him, you do you want to pray to receive Christ? And he says yes, and um, and and it was amazing and. Um, you know, it, it just, the Lord totally surprised me. And then after that, um, for, I don't know, several times after that, many trips after that, uh, every week somebody else would come to uh, to pray to receive Christ. And so it's just been the most rewarding thing that I've ever had in my life as far as that kind of yeah. experience. Yeah. Well, Danny, I know, I mean, I think you all went something like seven weeks with no results, but you kept going. Right. And, you, know, you know, so many people... Uh, they'll come take and they go one or two times and if they don't see instant results, they, they drop out. You know, I always remember right. about Willie William Carey, the great missionary to India, who was a cobbler. And uh, he, he lived seven years and never saw a convert, not one. But he stayed to the task. And so that's, that's what I always appreciate about you, that uh, even though you weren't seeing results, you were here every week. And you were going out and being part of the visitation team. Well, you already started to mention it, but I want to share some other things, uh, get you to share some other things. What happened in your life after you saw the first person come to Christ? Well, it just, um, you know, I felt like I really experienced the joy of the Lord. I mean, I, I knew I was doing something that He, you know, instructed us to do. and uh, But I feel like I, I think I got more out of it than, than what I gave. I mean, just being able to go through that experience, and it just makes you want to keep doing it over and over. And, and the times that I've done it and it's been successful, 
I felt like it, it wasn't me doing it. I mean, it was, I felt inadequate, but that I knew the Lord was adequate, more than adequate. And uh, so it's, uh, it's just something, the more you do, it's the more you want to keep doing. So I would encourage everybody to, uh, to get involved, and uh, you'll never regret it a single day of going out and sharing the gospel. Yeah, uh, Danny, I know, I know what you're talking about because I remember the team I was on 53 years ago, very first time I ever went, I didn't even know what visitation was. And the team I was on, a fellow by the name of Coy Steele, one of our deacons, uh, led this whole family to the Lord. And I've never got over it, and you've never got over it, because I'm going to tell you, as I shared with some other people, uh, it just got to the point that, well, who did Danny win to the Lord uh, tonight? <laughs> so I appreciate it. And, you know, uh, always remember Danny is what I tried to teach you is you know you don't have to you know we all go out and fear a little bit because this is something that we don't normally do mm -hmm. but and a lot of people say well what should I say well we forget the promise of God in Luke 12 12 don't worry about you need to say because at the moment you need to say it uh, he'll give you the words to say and have you, have you found that to be true I have found that to be true because because I'm not a person of a lot of words sometimes I don't know what to say but in that moment um, the Lord does provide, and, uh, and sometimes when I think they're not going to respond, they respond. So it's it's not me doing it; it's definitely Him. Yeah, and that's and that's and that's the key, and that's a valuable lesson learned. That all God asks us to do is go, and He'll do the rest. The problem is we're not going. Thank you, thank you, Danny. I appreciate you, and, and you know you're, right, you. and you know I kid you all that, but you know you're one of my heroes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have to be on guard against the lies of Satan. Satan has lied to us. He's lied to us that, that there's only a few that are responsible for evangelism. It's only a few that are responsible to tell people about Jesus. It's those that have the gift. But Jesus said, you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria to the ends of the earth. All of us, on the day of Pentecost, there was 120 they didn't say, well, I don't know if I have the gift where I can go witness. No, they all went out. And 3,000 were saved that day. Yeah, I, I think about it. It, 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 it. it troubles me. But when the church was persecuted in Jerusalem, the Bible says everywhere they went, everybody was scattered except the apostles. See, a lot of people think it's the, it's the preacher's job. No, according to Ephesians 4.11, it's a preacher's job and the gifts of leadership that he gives to the church, the evangelist, the prophet, the teacher, the pastor, to teach the people till we all come up to the fullness of Christ. See, it's everybody's job. Now, it's our task to teach. That doesn't, that doesn't mean that, I, that I'm not also responsible for going out and sharing my faith. But when I'm, as a pastor, what am I responsibilities that God has given me is to teach others how to share the gospel. So we multiply ourselves. So they were all scattered. But let me give you one more example as I bring this to a close. You remember when Peter and John went up to the temple and uh, the beggar said, asking for alms, and Peter said, silver and gold I have you not. What I have I give to you. Rise up and walk. And then he went into the temple and he preached the gospel. He, told, he started telling people about Jesus, and people were starting to be saved. And some of, the, some of the priests were starting to be saved, and some of the guards were starting to be saved. And, and then they arrested and put him in jail. And then they brought John and Peter in front of the Sanhedrin. And the Sanhedrin said, you all quit sharing this gospel. In fact, the Bible says they perceived they were ignorant men. In other words, they didn't have the, they didn't have the education that other people had. They, 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 they were in the, a position of, of leadership. They were ignorant in the eyes of the Sanhedrin. But they perceived that they'd been with Jesus. And Peter, with great boldness, who just a few weeks before that had denied Christ three times, stood up and said, what should we do? Would you tell us what God tells us? And they left and they let him go because they feared the people. And they went and reported to the church. Now hear me. They reported to the church and the church prayed. And they didn't say, Lord, bring down fire on the Sanhedrin. They said, no, Lord, you take note of what, what they've commanded us. But as for us, give us more boldness to share your gospel. And it said that they left there sharing the gospel. 
Now, Peter and John didn't leak. The whole church went out. The whole church is responsible. Ladies and gentlemen, and you know I'm not preaching because I'm not taking up an offering, but we don't need a new commission. We need new commitment to the old commission. And we need to understand that it's all of our responsibilities to share the, our faith in Christ. And it's, it's, it's our responsibility within our circle of influence. Mm -hmm. And let me just give you a secret that, that you're going to be learning during this training. There's certain things that we need to do. First of all, we every day need to pray for a fresh feeling of the Spirit. We have the Spirit. The question is not do we have the Spirit, does the Spirit have us? Are we walking in the Spirit or are we walking in the flesh? Are we walking, uh, following Jesus' guidelines on purpose for Him, on mission for Him? Are we more concerned about our own affairs? So every day, every day you wake up, you need to ask for a fresh feeling of the Spirit. You need to ask God to help you be under control of the Spirit and to listen to Him and follow His leading. Secondly, you need to put on the armor of God. I believe that. Jesus told us, you know, God told us twice to put on the armor of God. We need to get dressed because we're going out into the world. And we're going to hear things and, and, and see things and we're going to be influenced by things and we got to, we got to be on guard. But then the, the last thing every person needs to do who, who loves Jesus, who wants to be on mission, wants to be faithful to his command going to all the world, we need to pray. Say, Lord, put somebody on our path, my path today. And you make it so obvious that I need to share with them. That I have to backslide not to do it. Ask God to bring people to you as we go. Talking, you know, don't, don't just go out and hitting people over the head. Don't, don't be obnoxious. But ask God to lead you to the one He has already prepared, who's already receptive. Because, ladies and gentlemen, as I close with this, in order for somebody to be saved, there has to be things, three things available. I believe this with all my heart. First, there has to be a blood sacrifice. Because the Bible says, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. But we have this blood sacrifice. Jesus shed his blood. Secondly, the Bible tells us that there has to be the calling to the Holy Spirit. You know, that's his job. The Holy Spirit brings a person to Christ. That's, that's his task. But then it says, and I believe this, there has to be the human agency. How will they believe it when somebody tells them? And how can we tell them unless we go? I think about this. Paul had an encounter with Jesus on the Damascus Road. Jesus sent him to Damascus, to a street called Street, and said, there'll be a man by the name of Ananias that will come and tell you all things that you ought to do. And then God, at the same time, speaks to Ananias and said, I want you to go to Street State straight and you'll find Saul there and, and then he talk, shared with him what he wanted to do and then I says I'm not going he says he kills people he, he's on a rampage he, he's, he's destroying uh, trying to destroy the church I'm not going to go and God says you will go how many of us are telling God every day Lord I'll do anything I'll even go to Africa but just don't put me out there where I have to share the gospel now we might not say that but we, we're doing that with our anger uh, our actions. But Ananias went. And we know, and I believe with all my heart, that he shared the love of Christ. And, and I believe that's when the human agency talked in Ananias to Paul. And he received Christ. And you say, Herb, how do you know that? Because it's immediately he got up and was baptized. You don't get baptized until after you receive Christ. You don't put on a wedding ring to let you make a vow to your mate. And so I, I rest my case. So in the next five or six weeks, you'll, you're going to learn very simply, not one method, but several methods. You're going you're gonna to learn how to share, how to get into conversation. You're going to learn so many things. But you're not going to learn it unless you watch the videos. And so at this time, as I get ready to close, here's Jeff, a dear, sweet man of God, who's going to come and tell you how how to get to the page. And also, during this talk, I hope you've watched the three testimonies of three people who have taken the training and it's changed their lives. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor Herb. So, I'm going to run over here and get the iPad and we'll change the screen and I'll show you exactly how to get 
to Pastor Herb's outreach page. Here we go. All right. So, change pages. And we will go. Here's our church page. And if you just go to fbsebring.com and click on the live stream, which we'll do. And then once you get to the YouTube channel, you're going to click on playlists. Since this is the first video, it doesn't show up yet. But the playlist is going to say FBC Bring Outreach. And you'll just click on that, and there you go. You've got it. Thank you so much. And I just sure hope that everyone that watches this video takes it to heart and decides that, you know, we love God, we need to love others. It really is a simple life. Love God, love others. And how best can we love others? Those that don't know God, don't know Jesus, need to hear. So let's share. Thank you.